You're listening to the Morning Punch and Show with RB and J live and direct for more cities and an Instagram model's bio. Get ready for some boxing talk on the clock. Let's face it, you're not working and somebody's got to pay for the Wi Fi. Good morning, everybody. It is RB and J. This is the Morning Punch and Show, the most unpredictable, honest, and authentic morning boxing talk show in the game. Today is Monday, August 22nd, 2016. Jay, we are back. We took a couple weeks off. Things were a little bit slow, but don't call it a comeback. That's right. That's right. We took a little time off, but you know what? Don't call it a comeback. We've been here for years, so we are back. <laughs> Anybody who is looking for us, we are never going to leave. All right. So anyway, Jay, my partner in crime, out there in Inglewood, Give us the hot question today. Actually, before you give us the hot question, our special guest today on Hotline Bling was supposed to be Big Baby Miller. And at the last minute, he canceled on us and said he was not going to be able to do it today. So two thumbs down for Big Baby Miller. That is so whack, but that's okay. We're still going to have a really good show. We have a good lineup for you guys. We're going to recap weekend fights. We're going to play Know It or Blow It. Please call the hotline, 718-508-9852. Press 1 so we can see you in the switchboard. That tells us that you want to play. Our trivia questions are really fun today. They should be fairly easy. You should be able to win free stuff from the Rage and Babe store. We also have hot topics that we're going to discuss. We've got a bunch of in case you missed it tidbits, just in case last week you were out of the loop. We got some really good word on the curb, especially about Luis Ortiz and Golden Boys mm. buyout. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We're going to give you the weekend fight schedule um, and then some other goodies. So, Jay, let's start with the hot question that we put out there on Twitter last night, and we want to get people's response. Go for it. The hot question of the day. And, boy, did you guys get hyped. You must have really missed us. Hot question of the day. Errol Spence still wants Kell Brook. What condition do you think Kell Brook will be in after the Triple G fight? We want to know your responses, and boy, you guys are grimy. If you want to see the responses, go to the hashtag, use the hashtag TMPS for the Morning Punch and Show, and we will read some of your responses during the show. And I can't even wait to read some of these responses because you guys are crazy. You really are crazy, but we on it. Jay, I, it. I, I think you should read like one or two, just open up so people can see how grimy this is. Last night, I was like, ooh. Jesus Christ. Yeah, last night we put the hot question out there. RB tweeted out last night, late last night. Once again, the hot question. Still, Spence still wants Brooke. What condition do you think Brooke will be in after the Triple G fight? The One of our listeners, Curry Too Low, shout out to Curry Too Low, said Brooke will look like a bloody tampon from day three of a woman's menstrual cycle after the Dang. Triple G fight. Tell us how you really feel, my, my dude. That's gross. That's, that's a whole lot. Uh, Rod underscore 76 says, I know it's probably not going to happen, but I'm going to say he survives the whole fight and is, and only is bruised up. So Rod underscore 76 is picking Triple G for the win, but he thinks Kell Brook is going to have, you know, a few little marks on his face. So we'll read some more responses during the course of the show, but my man was grimy, though, with a bloody tampon. Jesus. Christ. Yo, my, my favorite one last night was from Untouchable Vic out there in Newburgh, New York. Shout out, Vic. Uh, you know, we asked, what type of condition is Brooke going to be in? And he said, critical. Grimy, <laughs> <laughs> oh, grimy, grimy, grimy. Where the Brits yeah. at? You know, usually when we tweet stuff about British boxers, the Brits jump in our mentions real quick, calling us all kind of C words and everything. But I don't know, Brit, where you at? Simplificado, I know you listen to the show and you listen in from across the pond. Where you at? Where your man's at? <laughs> Come on, let us know. So, Hot question. So, so look, the lines are open, 718-508-9852. We're going to jump in and recap this past weekend's fight, but make sure that you press 1 so that we can see that you want to play Know It or Blow It with us. So, Jay, Damn let's right. punch in. Let's go to Friday night on CBS, Big Baby Miller, Stop Fred Coffee in three rounds. Big, Give us the recap. Big Baby Miller. 
Big Baby Miller's Big Baby Ass. That man weighed in supposedly at 296 pounds. I don't know why he couldn't rock with us this morning. Maybe he had a meal scheduled or something that he couldn't get on with us. But we looked at the fight. I was expecting Fred Cassie to do some things because he took Chris Ariola life and death. He's pretty competitive when he's in a fight. But Big Baby came out through some big some big plotting punches, and he's just a big dude. And I think that sir, that size was just insurmountable for Cassie that night. He's being outweighed by like 50 or 60 pounds. That's just crazy. And just the Jay. sheer weight of – yes, ma'am. Oh, I was going to say, I'm sorry. Is it me, or does oh. he just keep getting bigger with every fight? Right. Who does that? How do you get how do you how are you in camp but you getting bigger every fight? I know that it's a heavyweight division and you don't have a weight limit, but damn. What do you you work out regularly and you're still putting on weight. What the hell wherever he lives, lock down your grocery store because there's not gonna be any food left for you. If somebody like Michael Phelps eats ten thousand calories a day when he's training, a dude that's two hundred and ninety six pounds we know ain't no work, no road work. We know that. But lock your food down. Might not be no more when Big Baby fall through. Well, but at here's any the thing rate. with Big Baby. Yeah, here's the thing with uh-huh. Big Baby. He talks a lot. You know, he thinks he's really charismatic. I think it's a little forced. <laughs> like, when I hear Deontay Wilder, yes. I think it's natural. I think, you know, he's mm-hmm. just, like, really fun, and that's his personality. I think Big Baby is putting on, like, a front. I don't know if that's really him. You know, he tries to come up with these really fun slogans and – but anyway, we wanted to get him on the show because he is fun. He is funny. You know what I mean? He'll come at your neck. Right. We were hoping to play chin check with him. But yeah. he dissed us today. When you just are being gay, that's like, yeah, that's like two thumbs down. Like, you know, whatever clout I was giving him, I'm not giving him too much clout now. A lot of people were asking us to get him on the show. We booked show him was. and he pulled off. That's whack. He needs to cut it. No, he's whack. He's kind of whack for that. <laughs> Because he really don't have nothing else to do. So, I mean, you know, shout out to Big Baby. You got the win. Fred Cassie retired, uh, said he had a hand injury and couldn't go on any further. So, sorry, I know you guys wanted to hear from him this morning. We reached out. We tried, but no soup. And probably because he yeah. won. So, that's, that's All a right. great recap for that. Yep. Let's move on. Friday night on Australia TV, Shabransky KO'd Rio Haas in the third round. And Ivan Delgado stopped Alejandro Ochoa. In round seven, I did not get the opportunity to watch these fights. Jay, I don't think you did either. I didn't. But the funny thing about that fight is my man, our man, you know, friend of the show, Jake Donovan, shout out to Jake in the box, said, Mm -hmm. you know, Fight Club is already finished in L.A. This Australia card was already done in L.A. And we still hadn't got to the main event in the um the CBS Sportsnet card that Big Baby was on, and somebody tweeted me and said, does that mean that the Big Baby card is more competitive or the Golden Boy card just sucks with mismatches? So you be the judge. Mm. They both were going on concurrently, and the main event didn't hit the stage on the CBS Sportsnet card until it was like, what, like midnight on the East Coast? So big up to the East Coast if you were able to hang with that. All right. Look, let's go to Sunday. On NBC, Earl Spence for Bundu. Spence violently right. knocked out Bundu in the sixth round. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. He made another good statement on NBC. He got in some rounds. He looked fresh. He looked sharp, composed. Mm-hmm. He did admit after the fight that he was a little confused. He felt Bundu was a little awkward, and he needed right. a little bit of time to figure him out. I'm not mad at him, though. But what I do no. want is I want him back in the ring again this year. I want to see him back mm. in November, December. He is the entire package today. I feel like he can fight. He's got this great smile. He's clean cut. He's from the country. He's got this awesome accent. He's fan friendly. He's marketable. So I, I just dude I would wife. love to see him back. No, he didn't have dude wipes this time. That's some bullshit. What You know, <laughs> that's some bullshit, literally. What's up with the dude wipes? You know, that seemed like such a big deal. And Errol Spence is that guy. Very, very talented. He's stepping it up a little bit. In the post-fight interview, he said he still wanted Kell Brook fight, and if Kell Brook wants to jump out of the fight with Triple G and fight him, he with it. I don't think that's going to happen, Errol Spence. He's going to go ahead and uh, take this L from Triple G. Yeah, I said it early. Don't take an L from Triple G. You got an early prediction. But he said he wants his mandatory shot. So back to the hot question. Remember what the hot question at the top of the show is. What is Kell Brook going to look like after this fight? Keep tweeting your response to that fight. But back to Errol Spence, 
he really that dude, Michelle? I really think he's that yeah. dude. I, I think he's like a silent assassin. You don't hear much from mm-hmm. him when he's not fighting. You know, he's kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. We have people hitting us up like, oh, he ain't got no personality. He's quiet. And we're like, well, yo, every time we talk to him, we have mad fun with him. And he opens up and he laughs. So sometimes it's the people on the other end of the mic that need to help these fighters kind of come out of their shell. With that being said, we probably will have Earl Spence on either this week or next week. They actually reached out to us, his team, and was like, hey, you right. know, EJ on. So EJ knows he has a home here. He knows he's got some friends with RB&J. He knows he could open That's up. Right. So we got a lot to talk about with EJ. So we'll let you know uh, when we book him. Hopefully it'll be this week. That's right. That's right. Looking forward to that. I'm and at- I hope he makes us something to eat. Yeah, I'm actually pulled up the IBF rankings right now, going a little off track. Mm-hmm. So if Kel Brook vacates and he can't fight Spence, well, the number mm-hmm. three guy is some Russian guy, the Konstantin Panamarov, and then we're back oh, to yeah. Jeff Horn from Australia. And mm-hmm. then the number fifth one, the number five guy, who I think this is who it's going to be, is Lamont Peterson. Oh, boy. Because what Lamont they do in the IBF is... Yeah, what they do in the IBF, Jay, is they just go down the ranking. So it's like, okay, if Kel Brook can't fight him, who's the next guy? Who's the, And then if he turns it down, okay, who's the next guy? I think we're going to end mm-hmm. up at Lamont Peterson. Lamont Peterson didn't fight Sammy Vasquez for whatever reason, mm-hmm. so he's just still sitting mm-hmm. there waiting for a fight, and now he's probably going to have to fight Earl Spence. That's what you get, That's Lamont. Right. That's what he get. Or maybe they'll just, in a tester, give him, like, Kell Brook's leftovers. You know, they like to give people, like, to let Errol Spence run through these leftovers. See, the next person in the rankings is Kevin Bizier. And I think, was it? Kevin Bizier what? So, you know, stranger things has happened. We know Eddie Hearn is over there getting his puppet master on with these Heyman right. fighters. So, you, know, you never know. <laughs> All right. So, another fight yesterday on NBC Sports Network was the first ever female bout between Heather Hardy versus Shelly yeah. Vincent. I have been looking forward to this fight. Jay, you have two. These girls literally cannot stand each other. They have real animosity. Um, Jay, you spoke to Heather Hardy last week. What did you get from her? I did. Heather Hardy was pretty open. She's pretty vocal. She was really excited about the opportunity. She made it clear. She was coming to win. She was going to win. She made real notice of the fact that she was a more skilled, a more technical fighter that, and that was going to be the difference between the fight. She, she conceded that Vincent was going to be aggressive and come forward and try to brawl with her. But she was, she was confident that her technical abilities, her, her movement using her jab, the reach advantage was going to be the deciding factor in the fight. And it, and ultimately it was a deciding factor in the fight. I think they got the decision, right? Shelly Vincent came in, she fought a good fight, but Heather Hardy was just a little bit more technically sound and landed and landed more accurate punches. So I enjoyed the fight. I hope we get some more women's matches on the car. Big up to all the women out there. Woo woo. So I hope we get some more. Yeah. You know, um, so Heather Hardy did get the majority decision. I think a rematch is deserving. You know, I know Shelly Vincent was like, you know, come to Providence. Well, you're not going to Providence yeah, for the fight, but there was good action. There was good drama. It was a good fight. It was better than most fights that we see on TV right now. So for the people that were bitching and, you know, teasing the fight with the girls fighting, let me tell you, the first three rounds of Hardy Vincent were more entertaining mm-hmm. than Spence Fundu. So don't come to yeah. that shit. Because it was an entertaining fight, whether it was female, male, whatever they are, it was a good fight. Stop fronting. It was so a anyway, nice look, we wa- it was. Let's play know it or blow it. We actually have somebody yes. in the queue that wants to play. So let's pick them up, Jay. Let's bring them on. Let's pick them. Six one zero nine zero five. You are on with the morning punch and show to play know it or blow it. Who are we speaking with? Hey, what's up? This is Frankie and PA. What hey, up, what Frankie. up? What's going on? How are you this morning? I'm good. I, I have a bad connection there. Oh, you always have a bad connection, PA. No, y'all better stop paying, stop using Metro PCS to run this show. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. All right, no, we ain't giving them we, no we, They need to cut us a check and we going to plug them like that. What's up, Metro? Can we get a check? Look, look. Uh, so, look, we're going to give you 10 seconds on the clock, 
And here is your question. We want you to name us three fighters whose last name starts with the letter S, as in Sam. Three fighters whose last name starts with the letter S. Jay, you ready to give him 10 seconds? Curtis Stevens. Uh, uh, <laughs> the twins. That's the twins. Ah. Uh... Wait, what? Sims. Those are three. Dad, we couldn't even get three fighters. He said Curtis Stevens and the twins. <laughs> and the, and the, 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 the Sims twins, I think. No. <laughs> <That's it>. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frankie, Yo, look, thanks is, for calling listen. in. Thanks. What? Every time I get on this show, you give me 10 seconds, I freeze up. I don't know what the fuck. That's why it's called Know It or Blow It. You want another 10 seconds, we'll give you another chance, but you can't use Curtis TV. I'm doing another 10 seconds. I keep, uh, I mess up every time you give me 10 seconds. I don't want to play no more. Right. Oh. Bye. Bye. He goes back to the queue on that. He pouted. He said, I ain't going to play no more. My mama gave me that chain. Uh, yeah. Ooh, he hung it, up it, too. <laughs> it sounds it sounds easy, but once that ten seconds come on, man, even the people who are in the game can't answer these things. But anyway, Jay, why don't we take a quick commercial break and we are gonna come back with hot topics and in case you missed it. Yes, we'll have to do that. He didn't ante up. Are you looking for a website that has all the latest and upcoming boxing events plus unique and stylish boxing shirts and hoodies for men and women? Go check out RagingBabe.com. It's your one-stop shop for the most current boxing info and fresh boxing apparel for him and her. Shop online today at RagingBabe.com. Use the promo code RB20 at checkout for 20% off your entire purchase today. That's code RB20 or 20% off your entire purchase today. Only at RagingBabe.com. So join the movement and see why attitude and loyalty become passion and determination only at RagingBabe.com. All right, we are, and we are back. Look, we want to play another note or blow it with you guys. Um, so make sure that you call in and press one so that we know you want to play. Frankie from PA did not get it right, but that's okay, Frankie. Uh, let's move into hot topics. Let's keep it rolling. Adrian that's Broner it. is free at last, free at last. He is home, and he got out hey. of jail, and he was running his eight miles, and he was showing us that he is focused again. It's the same broken hey. record over and over. But he's I'm already always focused when I get off punishment, too. I used to be focused when I used to get off of punishment when I was a kid. You know, you fuck up, and then your parents put you on punishment for two weeks. Boy, you be tight when you first get off of punishment. So he He's yeah, already he talking junk. He He's mm-hmm. talking about he would beat Pacquiao, that Pacquiao Vargas is trash. And I'm like, oh, that $4 million is looking real good right now, doesn't it, A.B.? His next trial date is set for September 21st. I hope he make it. I hope he make it. I and don't. Well, obviously, the Pacquiao fight isn't on the table for him anymore. Word on the curb is, which is not in the word in the curb section, but we'll just dish it right now, is that they're looking at maybe him fighting like Ricky Burns or someone like that. So if he fight Ricky Burns, he'd be rep, Ricky Burns. He ready to get some of that uh, Bud Crawford work then since he want to fight Burns? <laughs> you <laughs> know, a fight lot of people, too? listen, a lot of people had a lot of hope that when Top Rank dropped their lawsuit against Heyman Boxing, that that meant that there was going to be this new relationship, that fights were going to get made, that there was going to be, you know, a partnership. That could not be further from the truth, you know, and and it's great. Everybody was really optimistic, but I just don't think we're going to get those crossover fights anytime soon. No. No. Mm-mm. Only crossover fight we'd get subjected to is probably another, if they could concoct it, another Floyd Manny stuff. But other than that, um, well, we did get Gary Russell and Vasil Lomachenko, but outside of that, unless there's a belt involved or something that really moves them or motivates them to coordinate a fight, I'm not optimistic like you, RB. I feel you. No, and, and those fights were mandatory, so it's not like they were like, oh, let's just work together. It's kind of like, oh, we have to work together. So anyway, right. last week, HBO – turned down the Manny Pacquiao versus Vargas fight. So after 10 years of Manny Pacquiao being on HBO, they pretty much have abandoned 
him. And Bob Arum was just off the chain, uh, just very, very angry. You know, he feels like Manny's Filipino fan base has been very, very loyal, and they have made mm-hmm. HBO a lot of money. Now, here's the problem, Jay, is that Top Rank has other fighters this year that need to fight. Terrence Crawford mm-hmm. needs another fight. Uh, Lomachenko needs another fight. What is going to happen with these guys? Where do they go? Not, uh, Periscope? I don't know. No, I don't know Rock what's going to happen. Network. No, that's Rock Nation's network. They use Periscope. Oh, that's right. That's right. Right. No Periscope <laughs> fight. Sorry. You know, we got a political war going on. So, sorry. Can't fight on Periscope like the other Rock Nation fighters. Well, it's tough. It's tough this, times over there in the HBO streets. It's tough times. You know, Game Game of Thrones is eating up all the HBO money. We don't have any money over there for a little bitty boxing. Well, here's the thing. I'm worried about what's going to happen to some of top ranked fighters because we'll talk a little bit more later about Luis Ortiz and Golden Boy. But if there's not dates available on HBO, and if there's not a budget for these guys who are getting bigger and making more money, where do they go? And so that's my concern. I'm not really upset that HBO turned down Pacquiao Vargas. I mean, look, Top Rank's going to just have to get really creative, and they might take it to ESPN or something. But it's like, what right. happens to the Crawfords and the Lomachenkos and the Oscar right. Valdezes? Where right. do they go? Right. So uh, anyway, mm. here's a funny statement, though, Jay. Bob Arum does seem to think that Pacquiao Vargas will attract Hispanic fans worldwide. Do you agree with that? And. I don't know. I don't know that they, I mean, with all due respect, we know you, if you listen to the show, you know, Jesse Vargas is a a friend of the show. We got nothing but love for Jesse Vargas, but our Latinos, hey, tweet us, use the morning punch and show TMPS tag. Are Latinos really rocking with Jesse Vargas like that in a Pacquiao fight? Are y'all out in the streets with the flags rocking with Jesse Vargas like that? And it's, it's no disrespect at all, but I just don't see it. I don't see them. I don't see people in the street. Jesse, Jesse. You know, I don't see it. I just don't yeah. see it. So, I mean, you know, uh, he got Hispanic fans, but they not mobilizing like that. I think most Hispanic yeah. fans would still rock with Pacquiao. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with Bob Arum's statement there. Anyway, in case you missed it, look, have, if, if you were lost in the sauce last week, like most of us have been, boxing has been kind of slow. Um, it hasn't really, you know, kept our focus too much. And we've been traveling and working and everything else. But uh, we want to bring you up to speed. There are some fights that have been made. Some things happened, you know, this past week that maybe flew over your head. So we're going to start out this segment called, in case you missed it, with Clarissa Shields. She won yeah. the gold medal yesterday. Back-to-back gold. Makes history. Yeah. She stood on that podium yesterday with her gold medal hanging around her neck. She reached in her pocket. She pulled out the other medal. It was so awesome. It was historic on so many levels. She becomes the first U.S. boxer to win two gold medals. Um, And, you know, she just represents so much. She represents women. She represents survival. She represents trials and tribulations and triumphs. And I just, I love this girl. You know, after she won, she thanked Jesus, and she was crying, and she was just so overwhelmed. Uh, so anyway, mm-hmm. word is that Golden Boy is said to be pursuing her, and Stephen really? Espinosa over at Showtime says that there is room for her on Showtime. Now that's wonderful, except for Golden Boy and Showtime, they don't work together. Right. So, I mean, that sounds cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Get it together, Did you y'all. happen to watch the fight, Jay? Clarissa's fight? No, I was out in the streets with my my own junior Olympian. Got me in these streets. <laughs> crazy but I got home back in time and I saw her with her pictures with the medals so I'll have to go back and watch it today because then after that we had to jump right back into the other fight so I will be taking that in today yay Clarissa. all right Woo. yeah so we hopefully we'll book Clarissa and maybe even Shakur Stevenson um on one of the ruckus shows talking about Shakur Jay why don't you talk about Shakur Stevenson next Shakur Stevenson oh man 19 years old 
He took a loss um, in his gold medal fight. He ended up winning the silver. He came up short. Let me not say he took a loss. He came up short against a Cuban fighter, Ramirez, and he was so emotional, inconsolable after the fight. We are accustomed to seeing emotion after a fight, but my man Shakur broke into a full Miss Seeley ugly cry, and he wailed that he doesn't like to lose. And I feel you, bro. I don't like to take an L either, but you got you got to pull it back just a little bit. You don't need all those emotions on the surface. But he is a good fighter. He's really talented. We know that a a, a loss in a gold medal round is not career ending. Many a fighter took a silver. Where's the guy to be Golovkin? Where's the guy to be Floyd? It's a lot of people who took the silver medal in the Olympics. So he should be good to go. Shout out to Tupac. There was room floating around after Floyd put the pictures out there that he was signing with Mayweather Promotions or that he wanted him or whatever Floyd was trying to imply. I think it was just to get those clicks from people following the Olympics to keep himself relevant. But the real word is that Rock Nation is coming hard for Shakur. Keep your head up. His mentor and favorite fighter, Andre Ward, has something hard to do with the recruitment for show. So, Where's Floyd? I mean, Shakur, Floyd, I just don't see, even though Shakur kind of looked like Hakeem from Empire, I just don't get that he's a flashy Gervonta type of guy. So, uh, you know, stick with Gervonta Davis. That's more his lane. And let Andre Ward cultivate this kid. And before you jump in our hashtag about how much y'all don't like Andre Ward, so damn what? Let Rock Nation do the boy, but... I don't know what happened, but I, I feel like I feel like Shakur. yeah, I feel like Floyd was a distraction out there. Like you said, he does like to keep himself relevant. He was out there looking at some Cubans and some some other fighters from Brazil. You know, then he gets in Shakur's back pocket and he's calling him the next Floyd Mayweather. And people were calling mm. me a hater, but I'm like, yo, Floyd, can you chill? You said that about right. Gamboa. You said you were going to pass the torch to Broner. You said Earl Spence was the next Floyd. Then it was Javonta Davis. Now you're telling the kids Shakur. Why does it always have right. to be that? Why, why are you doing this to these kids? You know, that puts a lot of pressure on them. And Floyd knows that, you know. And so I thought, it, I thought it was just, like, really whack. But I will say Shakur was very honest in defeat. And he was very authentic. And, you know, you can't knock that. You could tell he's still immature. He's a 19-year-old kid. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of growing to do, but he'll, he'll be a good pro for sure. Yes, he will. So um, anyway, moving on, this might actually be some word on the curb. I didn't really see this out there anywhere last week or this week. Uh, but this morning it was sent to me that Jay Leon Love is set to face Deshaun Johnson on September 16th mm. in Las Vegas on the Ishe Smith versus Frank Galarza card. So if you don't know who Deshaun Johnson is, he's the guy that floored Jesse Hart a couple times a few That's months right. ago. And then he went back yep. to Philly and beat the Carlo Perez. Uh, he's a hard, mm-hmm. tough-nosed fighter, you know. And so that'll mm-hmm. be a good fight between Jay Leon and Deshaun September 16th. Yeah, and, and Deshaun. Las Vegas, Deshaun, people want to come out. Cause this is just a hop, skip, and jump from L.A. to Vegas. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, met, we shall see how that turns out. Also, and in case you okay. missed it, news finalized this week. Gabriel Rosado versus Willie Monroe is set to be the co-feature against Elo Alvarez versus Liam Smith on September 17th in Vegas. Also, I mean, in uh, Texas. Also on the card, Diego De La Hoya to take on Orlando Del Valle to open up the pay-per-view. An interesting choice of cards. Yeah. Uh, let us let us know. Well, let, let us know how you feel about the Canelo versus Smith pay-per-view card in the Morning Pungent Show, please use TMPS and let us know what you think of the card. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. Back to you, You Arby. opened a can of worms. You opened a can of worms. You're a troublemaker. All right, Luis Kuga Arias, uh, who used to be <laughs> signed with Floyd Mayweather and said that he saw how dirty the game is when he was signed with him. Anyway, he won this past weekend in Milwaukee, in his hometown, mm. um, once again, Rock Nation on Periscope. Right. What's go- what's cracking in Milwaukee? Do we have anybody who listens to the show from Milwaukee? I got to be honest. Only thing I ever knew that was hot that came out of Milwaukee was Laverne and Shirley. So if there's a big bustling population of people who box up in Milwaukee, you know, holler back at your girl. I don't mean any disrespect, but the only Milwaukee-born stuff I know is Laverne and Shirley and Lenny and Squiggy. That's about it. <laughs> oh, man. 
I have no idea. Anyway, moving on, Jay. Dominic Dalton versus Justin Deloach is set for September 16th on Bounce TV. So if you have Bounce TV, make sure you tune into that. I still don't know where Bounce TV is at because it's not on Direct TV. And where is did anybody who watches these fights on Bounce TV? Where is Bounce TV at? Like what channel is that? So look, I have to be really honest. Bounce does actually do pretty decent numbers for how small they are because you can also watch it on BounceTV.com. So I don't have the channel, but they do stream, and it is a nice stream. It's not like a bootleg stream. It is really, really high quality. So when there are fights on Bounce, I'm usually watching them um, online. Uh, Dominic Mm -hmm. Dalton, I believe he's from, like, Detroit. I think he's a decent fighter. And then Justin Roach, I think he's undefeated from Texas, or he trains with Ronnie Shields and those guys. So, um, you know, Bounce isn't really that bad of a product. We joke about it, but their stream is way better than some other people's streams, and I won't mention who they are. Um, We have a couple people in the queue that want to play. We only got a couple more topics to hit for in case you missed it, and then we're going to go pick you guys up. Mike Perez versus Petrov is set for the WBA Eliminator September 30th at Fantasy Springs. That's deep. I ain't going out to no damn Fantasy Springs. That's too far. Unless somebody want (laughs) to pick me up and roll me out there. I mean, Mike the Artist Perez, you know, I'll roll out there. But, man, it's deep. It's hot. It's down in Palm Springs. If somebody want to, you know, come by the crib, come by, swing by Inglewood, and I'll jump in the whip with you and go down to Fantasy Springs. But that's pretty cool. Uh, also, in case you missed it, Povetkin versus Severn targeted for Barclays in New York in the fall. As we know, the WBC suspended him and then unsuspended him, and he gets a whole year of making sure he don't test dirty. That's foul. You 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 piss dirty, then you should be suspended. Why why are why are the Russians? Sorry, Russians. I don't know why you're getting all these extra chances. You, you got most of your asses banned from the Olympics. That should extend to professional sports too. You know, Jay, I, I didn't really follow this. I don't know if you did, but it is really bizarre. It was like, we're suspending him. And then, like, 20 minutes later, it's like, we're not suspending him. Like, how does that work? How does that happen? How do, you, Money how do you pop dirty? And Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, Felix Verdejo, he will not be returning this year. He is out the rest of 2017. Uh, yes, his injuries were that bad. He had some head trauma. And he really needs to um, get better and go through some therapy and things of that sort. So hopefully we'll, we will see him back next year. Let's just kind of keep him all in our prayers and thoughts, and hopefully mm-hmm. he'll be all right. Jay, mm-hmm. let's take Don't a quick talking. commercial break so I could drink some water here because we had the wrap, and then we're going to come back and pick up some callers that are in the queue. Word up. The Caribe Hilton Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico will host the 29th WBO convention October 17th through October 21st. The World Boxing Organization is a sanctioning organization currently recognizing professional boxing world champions such as Sergey the Crusher Kovalev, Gilberto El Surdo Ramirez, Terrence Bud Crawford, Jesse La Nueva Generacion Vargas, Roman Rocky Martinez. Registration forms and advertising opportunities are on our website at WBOboxing.com. The WBO also has a mission that extends beyond the ring. So help join the WBO on this fight and for more information on the WBO Convention of Puerto Rico and the Kids Drug Free Program. Visit WBOboxing.com. And we are back. You are listening to the Morning Punch and Show with RB and J. It is a hot, hot day on a Monday morning. And see, I talk all that mess, and I knew my British fight fans wouldn't let me down. I'm going to pick up this fight fan because I can tell by all these 10,000 numbers that are in the switchboard that this is somebody from Britain. It's not the usual pin number. So I'm going to pick up this Brit and see what's good. Good morning. You are on with the Morning Punch and Show. Who am I speaking to and where are you calling from? Yeah, yeah good morning. Good morning. So, um, it's, it's the Pink Rose. I what's going on, man? Because... Yeah, I, I was listening to you earlier and you were talking about um, Spence Jr. calling out Brooke. That's right. Yeah, what are yeah. your um, thoughts on could that? It, could it be possible that he's calling Brook out because he wants to get a, a big enough name to fight for the title? Because remember, um, when he had the Eliminator, all the people above Bundu passed on it. That's the Russian guy, right. Jeff mm-hmm. Bond, the Australian guy, 
Peterson right. passed on it, and also Zami, Sami Vasquez passed on it That's as well. Right. And then it went down to Bundu, who accepted the fight. So he might be worried that someone won't, won't, won't take the fight who's not a big enough name. That's why he's calling out Brook. Because if Brook is not fighting, who is he going to fight? If these people pass before, they may pass again. So he might end up with someone like Bradley Skeet, another UK person mm-hmm. who's about number seven, number eight down the list. Well, now let me propose. Let me let's you know discuss this. Brooke is uh, Errol Spence is now Brooke's mandatory, but Brooke has a fight scheduled against Triple G. First two yeah. parts. How do you think that Brooke will fare against Triple G? And then also, depending on how that fight goes, do you think he'll honor his mandatory challenge against Errol Spence, or will he vacate? In I your think opinion, you stop him. I think Triple G will stop him within say seven or eight rounds. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, like I said earlier with my tweet um, to the TMPS thing, I think it all depends if Brook can get back to 147. Um, mm-hmm. If he can get back to 147, I think he'd take the fight against Spence. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that's the question. Can he get back to 147? Or if he can't, obviously he has to vacate. Oh, okay. Well, at- <laughs> Let me ask let me ask you this. One more quick question. I'm sorry, R B. For those of us in England, we know that Brooke is a popular fighter across the pond. We know who he he is, but we don't see him on a day to day basis here in the United States like we do our fighters over here. Is Brooke typically walking around big like that in between fights? Is that normal for him? He walks around over hundred and eighty pounds. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, he goes in, yeah, he walks up, he walks around over on eighty pounds between fights. So it's not it wasn't a surprise that he's under seventy six pounds because he's coming from over one hundred eighty pounds. Wow, wow. That's so then I can, you know I I I wonder if it's safe to say then if he fights Golovkin, whether he does good or whether he does bad. I mean, making 147 again, that would be a real challenge, especially, you know, since he has to only make 160 for this fight. This probably feels easy for him right now because typically yeah. he's going from 180 to 147, which is probably excruciating. Yeah, and also he's getting help from um, the, the, some scientific um, place in, in Sheffield There's some, that he uses um, to, to deal with his weight. So they're actually doing it scientifically to get him to the 160 mark. He's not just take, he's not just doing it. He's actually taking um, tests and doing it scientifically to to do it. So that's that's why it might be a possibility because they're doing it so scientifically. It might be a possibility that they're working out a way that he can get to 147 after the fight as well. You know what I mean? And can I just say something as well? I saw an interview with um, Lamont Peterson um, one time mm-hmm. on one of, on one of the podcasts on one of the other um, on YouTube. And he said that he, 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 he goes to about 180, 190. And, but he, he, said, he's asked, he, he was asked the question, um, why do you go so big? And he said that he, feels, he just feels more comfortable to, to go that big. He just, his body just feels comfortable. And that's why he does it all the time. Well, you know, this really messed up plans for Al Heyman. If we're going to be honest, Al sent Charles Martin over there to Eddie Hearn. He sent Dominic Brazil over there. And the plan always was, you're going to have to give me Kel Brook for Earl Spence because I'm trying to build my star. You're trying to build Anthony Joshua, and I got Earl Spence over here. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my heavyweights and let you annihilate them. But we want, And then next thing you know, Kel Brook told the, took the Triple G fight, made his own call, made his own decision, and pretty much gave Heyman the finger. Yeah. Well, we, we, we were not after the fight. It's not until after the fight everyone would know. I mean, probably one to about four weeks after. Because remember that his mandatory is up in December because he fought in March, his mandatory. So it's nine months. So, so the IBF is going to call it in, it in December. So he has to make a decision. Well, the writing is on the wall. He decided that he is going to face off against Triple G. Can't be mad at that. It's probably going to be a fantastic payday, and we will await the outcome of that fight to see what happens with his Kate with his business with Errol Spence. But LRS, we appreciate you calling in. We got to move on to some other topics yeah, thank you. coming up with uh, 20 minutes out, but I'm going to put you back in the queue, okay? All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, and we are back. We are going to get into some more of these hot question answers because you guys are really excited. Once again, to remind you, the hot question of the day, we uh, the hot question of the day is Spence wants Brooke. He still wants Brooke to exercise his mandatory spot. What condition do you think Brooke will be in after the Triple G fight? And we are going to go to the TMPS hashtag. EJK1 Boxing says it'll be quick. He won't even know he was not the F out until they tell him. Good grief. Grimy. Huh. All right. And another response from RGST89 says, even if Brooke is in well condition after September 10th, he might have a bigger problem cutting that weight back down. Good point. Because he's going to take some time off, we imagine, after the Triple G fight. So is he going to blow back up to 190, as our British caller just said, and then try to get back down in a quick turnaround? I think they have nine months to exercise their mandatory or they have to step aside. So we'll have to keep an eye on his weight. We'll have him weigh in like Biggest Loser on the Morning Punch <laughs> show. Uh, we have I, another I, response from, from Cock Diesel Dude. Go ahead, RB. No, go ahead. Keep Cock going. Diesel, Cock Diesel dude who is BZ323. Are you <laughs> Cock Diesel? You and you guys and your children. <laughs> I'm thinking Brooke will be in the same condition after the Triple G fight that Roy was in after Ruiz. A convenient excuse, too. Ooh. Naughty, naughty. Let's see. Exposed Boxing says big payday equal vacation mode. I heard that. I want a big payday and a vacation. Roman Rome says, honestly, Brooke will be damaged goods after Triple G fight. Now mm. he comes back to 147. If he does, Spence picks him apart. Ooh, so crazy this morning. One more. Artie mm. Blackwell says he probably won't be able to fight this year after the Triple G beatdown. Artie Blackwell says he's catching that fade. Uh, Danny Rosen, my God, y'all like this topic. Danny Robson says, depends on how brave Kel is. If he gets stopped early without a beating like Martin versus Joshua, then Kel Brooks Spence could be great. It could be. It could be. My low play says, Eddie Hearn is going to have another feather in his cap. He'll be a used car salesman after the Triple G fight. Ooh, cute one, too. Uh, I'd buy a car from him. Uh, Dino yeah. says, Brooke won't be in no condition after his fight versus Triple G. Spence, sadly, will have to wait until 20... 17 for real competition. Ooh, y'all not got no All love right. for Kel Brook. The hood got we, no love for And then look at the. I'm just going to retweet this, RB. Yeah, this yeah. We, we, we're we getting a ton of responses. Everybody loves the hashtag and the hot question. We put it out Sunday night. So make sure you check back next Sunday night. We'll have another hot question for you guys. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't know if he takes an ass whooping, if he can take a consecutive ass whooping with Earl Spence, because I do think Earl would beat him. I do think Kel Brook is good, but I don't think he's that good. But anyway, I want to play some more Know It or Blow It, Jay. Mm-hmm. If anybody's out there mm-hmm. listening, 718-508-9852, press 1 to play with us. And you know what? I'm going to be nice right now. We're going to give you 20 seconds instead of 10 seconds yeah. to answer the trivia, because we want to give away some free stuff on the show. Is there anybody willing to play with us? We are switching no. is lit and nobody has I been wine because nobody wants to nobody wants to play. Oh, somebody a brave soul just press one. Let's pick up this press one here. Eight one six. I'm about to press your button, so be ready. Eight one six, you are on with R B and J. Who are we speaking to? What's up, what's up? This is Mike Can from Missouri. What's up? Hey what's good? Mike from Missouri. What's going on? Nothing. You ready to play Know It or Blow It? Yep, ready to give it a shot. Let's go. All right. We're going to give you 20 seconds just because you dared to be great and nobody else wanted to. So we're going to give you 20 seconds on the clock, and you need to name us five current world champions. Five current world champions. Go. Okay. Deontay Wilder. Um... <laughs> hey, dang, Deontay Wilder. Uh, yeah, we're going to give you another 10. That was your uh, first 10. Here's your second 10. Okay. Deontay Wilder. Uh, <laughs> Carol Brooks. Uh, let's see. Keith Thurman. Uh, Who? Keith 
Sharon. Oh, she said um, it. Well, yeah. you gave us Time. you gave us three. You didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Oh, man. Well, look, thank you, right. thank you so much for calling in. I know it sounds easier than it is. Those 20 right, seconds right, go by real right. quick. But shout out to Missouri. Yeah. We're going to put you back in the queue. All right. Thank wow, guys. Know it or blow it. It's claiming victims. We catching bodies out in these streets today, yo. We're going to have to start calling ourselves Avon and Stringer, except without the double crossing and, the, and you know, the, the you know getting shot by Brother Muzon. But... Maybe we're more like Ghost and Tommy. But no, Holly. Yeah, we are. Man, Holly. Bye. Listen, Jay, these questions sound so easy. And even to the average boxing fan, you know, you think it would just be so easy. And that it's very telling that a guy who listens to our show all the time, our boy from Missouri, he's always in there listening can't name five current world champions, and he is an avid boxing fan. He watches boxing every okay. week. So what does That's that right. tell us? There are too many champions. There are too many belts. Nobody knows who the world champions are. They don't know. Yeah. All these made-up belts. Suckle. Oh. Yeah, we don't need all Play these. Say that again, Jay. Play <laughs> that again. Suckle. We don't need all them belts. We don't need no stinking uh. belts. <laughs> Oh, that is Bomax for you. Woo! Always dropping f bombs on the morning punching show. All right, All right, Jay. I think we're uh, we're ready to move on to some word on the curb. What you think? I think we're ready. Let me get your let me get your word on the curb music for you. All right. Oh, what? I got a hot sixteen. Okay. You got a hot. My name is Peaches. No, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Word on the curb. Uh, the Gail versus Badu Jack is pretty much finalized, guys. Now, that fight seems to have gone to the Bermuda Triangle a couple months ago because the Gale wanted a lot of money, and he wanted to fight over there in London. And Badu Jack was like, nah, I'm good over here in Vegas and this and that. And so it looked like it had went to Bolivian, but it's back al- alive, and it's pretty much finalized, and it will land in Las Vegas, hopefully in the late fall, meaning late October, November-ish. So look out for the Gale versus Jack. I like that fight. I think that's a really good fight. It's taken that's a little a too look. long to make. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and this is what look. seems to happen is that they let stuff get stale and they let stuff marinate a little too much. But that's a good fight. Um, all right. So look, l- last week there was an article out there like on Boxing Scene and some other websites and people were tweeting about this a lot that the WBA has approved Jason Sosa versus Javante Davis title fight for um, for the WBA title. Well, that was a little premature. Word on the curb is that the WBO, the WBA has not yet approved them to fight for the title. Now, if it does get approved, it is being projected to land in Vegas, probably late October. Really good fight. Everybody was really, really receptive to it and embraced that fight. But it was a little premature, that announcement. So... Let's keep our fingers crossed that we still get Sosa versus Davis. That's right. But that is not yet finalized. So some more on the word on the curb. Sullivan Barrera is not very happy these days. He, he feels like he's inactive. He fought Andre Ward. He put up a good fight. He still hasn't gotten another fight. The, you know, his publicist is putting out press releases and everything. But word on the curb is, is um, that Bernard Hopkins has been talking to Sullivan Barrera about making his last fight against him and it'll probably land in November and they're projecting it in Washington DC. Ooh. Not a bad fight, Washington. right? For B Hop's last fight? No, not a bad fight at all. In the Chocolate City, folks will turn out and I I love B Hop. I'm I'm ready for the Hall of Fame clock to start running. Yeah. I'm ready for him to roar clock so we and when they when they get inducted we going we going out to Cal Calistota. We going out there, R B. We gonna ride in the parade. Yeah, you know, um that's a really nice way of putting it. I'm ready for his Hall of Fame class to start kicking. I, I like how, mm-hmm. how you put that, Jay, because we love Bernard and he he's just really great, but I, I think we're ready to see him get inducted um, to the Hall of Fame. Right? And well earned, well de- well earned, well deserved 
people who can say what they want about B Hop. We know B Hop got the rap, but B Hop no few fighters advocate harder for fighters than Bernard Hopkins. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know the history of Bernard having your back then you need to educate yourself a little bit more on boxing history, whether you a golden boy, a, a Al Heyman, or whoever you like to ride for. Educate yourself on the stuff that Bernard Hopkins has been doing behind the scenes for boxers throughout his career, no matter what you think about him in the ring. Yeah, you're right. So here's the juiciest word on the curb, and I wanted to save it for the last segment here. Luis Ortiz and Golden Boy, they are very close to a buyout. And you've seen some stuff out there on different, you know, websites and all. But, but here's the thing, and it's really strange. Supposedly, there's this group called Dave Promotions, and they've been in Luis Ortiz's ear. They've been with him for a while. You know, Golden Boy did most of the work, built him up. But this is very typical of Cuban fighters. They get frustrated, and they want to leave. You know, look at Gamboa and some of these other Cuban fighters. So the wheels have been in motion. Luis Ortiz and Golden Boy, they are going to split. Um, it could be finalized as early as this week. Or he's, he's just disappointed with the lack of dates. It's not so much that he's disappointed with the paydays because he was cool fighting for 250, 300. But he wanted to fight like three or four times a year, not one or two times a year. So that was the sticking point. There was supposed to be this WBA tournament that's really not going anywhere. Um, He's just concerned that Golden Boy really doesn't have big plans for him. You know, he's supposed to fight in June. Then it went into September. And he's like, okay, what happens after September? You know, so he's just not happy. And here again is where I was saying earlier that HBO problems are going to become promoter problems because you're going to have these fighters that are going to look at their promoter, not the network. They're not signed to the network. They're going to look at their promoter. Hey, top rank. Hey, Golden Boy, why aren't I fighting? Why aren't I getting a check? Why can't I get a date? And these promoters are going to start losing fighters. Mm-hmm. That's correct. You know, I just yeah. had such an odd thought. Speaking of fighters that are tied to networks, I don't know why. I just thought about Andre Ward. Andre Ward, since he's Mr. Positivity and son of God, he ought to holler at Oprah. See if we can get a fight on the own network. Sure, oh. that might be a good fit. You, could you imagine Oprah? On a fight on Oprah's network, and he might be the fighter she would she would roll with. I don't know. I'm weird like that. I, I'm kind of ADD. Excuse me. Go ahead, Arby. Well, yeah. Well, you know what? If Luis Ortiz, that was like really off, Jay. If, uh, I, I, if Luis right. Ortiz, if the split does happen, which it is going to happen, there is a promoter out there that's looking to sign fighters, and they go by the name of Ring Star Sports, which is owned by Richard Schaefer. So don't be surprised if Luis Ortiz breaks some Golden Boy and ends up, you know, over at Team Heyman or Team Schaefer. Um, that mm. would only make sense. Absolutely. Right? So Absolutely. That is my word Absolutely. on the curb. Oh, boy. So remember, you heard it here. Make sure you cite us in your articles because we see you. I heard some stuff this weekend that came directly from shows of ours. I'm not going to say what network was using content that I know was very specific to some broadcast that RB and I did. So, you know, tip your bartender when you do that kind of thing. Well, so let's you know jump what? in. Before... We... Wait, well, Go ahead. wait, before we jump in, we have to shout out Fox and Scene because I will say that some of those guys over there, they do listen to the show and they do give us credit. You know, if we're breaking mm-hmm. something or if we give them a lead or anything. So shout out to Boxing Team. Support goes both, both ways. Yeah. All right, Jay. What up, Boxing Team? Fight schedule. All right, the weekend. Man, let me wait. Let me get my energy up and let me get my, my, my music together for this. Maybe it'll get me a little enthusiastic for this fight schedule this weekend because it's looking a little eh. All right, Migos, help you girl out. Tuesday on Fox Sports 1, Juan de Angel versus Caleb Plant. So Fox Sports 1, Tuesday Night Boxing. If you want to watch that, check it. This Saturday, August 27th on Spike TV, in the main event, Robert the Ghost Guerrero versus David Emmanuel Peralta. And in the co-feature, Alfredo Angulo is back at super middleweight against Freddie Hernandez. I'll be in the house in Anaheim at the Honda Center for that fight. So if you see me, cut your girl a beer or something, and I'll come out and drink it with you. On Saturday, August 27th, on Unamas, Guy Rob versus Miguel Mariaga. And that's it, RB. That's all I got. 
Yeah, I. This, this is why when we took our little break the past couple weeks, that's why it didn't kill us over here. Because right. look at this fight schedule. It's been like that. And I'm just hoping, Jay, that it was the summer. Like, it's like summer break, right. hopefully, and everybody's, like, vacationing. Or I don't know what the hell people are doing. But this fight schedule is really sad this week. Again, I'm not knocking anybody. I don't care what network it's on, what promoter it is, or who manages any of these fighters. It's a week schedule this week. But whatever, we're still going to watch because we're just loyal like that. Jay, you're going to be at the fight on Saturday, aren't you? I'll be at that fight on Saturday. And speaking about that fight on Saturday, so we got Robert Guerrero headlining another card on Spike TV. So it'll probably be well watched. Because Spike TV did this promotional Mm -hmm. thing where they did a part MMA, part boxing press conference and all that to get people to tune into these block of fights. Here's a question for you. What do you think Robert Guerrero's purse is for this fight? I read somewhere that Errol Spence's purse for the fight this past weekend was 300 k What do you think the ghost getting for this fight on Spike? Uh, You know, Robert Guerrero has minimums. When he fought Floyd Mayweather, part of his deal and his team was very smart was that he was going to get minimum for, you know, pretty much the rest of his career. So it'll probably be a big number. Um, That's crazy. I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, it's on spike. Let's say 450, let's say 500. I mean, I don't know what his, his minimums are at this point, but it'll be pretty high. And that's not to say that whatever is reported to the commission is what he's getting, because we all know there's that side check that comes into play, too. So we might see 250, and then he might get another 250 on the side. Yeah, I can't wait for Dan Raphael to put the purse information on blast. Maybe I'll jump up on the California State Athletic Commission website and see what I can find out. But, man, that's that's just crazy to me. He's going to make more expense. We know that. Well, you know, and here – I kind of like Robert Guerrero winning this weekend and then possibly fighting like Broner. Mm. Mm. You know, I I think that'd be a good couple. Not that hard. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Jay, I, I think that's it. I think we're ready to wrap it up. We played Know It or Blow It. We dished the word on the curb. We caught everybody up on the boxing headlines and fights that are hey, being made and falling yeah. apart. Yeah. <laughs> I just so, needed a reason to play that. Yeah, we'll be back Wednesday on The Ruckus at 8 p.m. Make sure you visit badculture.net, ragingbabe.com. We appreciate you guys for listening today. We missed you guys so much. We got all your messages, texts, phone calls, emails, DMs. We got them all. We're back. We won't leave you hanging again. Thank you to my amazing partner in crime, Jay. Catch us every Monday morning, 8 to 9 on the Morning Punch and Show. And thank you for making us a part of your day. It's a wrap, Jay. It's a wrap. Why the fuck you lie? <laughs> Just kidding. It's a wrap. <laughs>